Hi everyone. I am Tang and I am a student in the clean energy class. Today, I would like to present briefly the paper impedance and thermodynamic analysis of bioanode, abiotic anode, and riboflavin amended anode in microbial fuel cells. This paper will provide us some analysis results of one critical component in microbial fuel cells field. It is a bioanode. My talk will include four parts. First is introduction and objectives of this paper, second is experiment procedure the author did. In the third section we will discuss about result and discussion of experiment, and the last one is conclusion. So, in the first part, I want to introduce about microbial fuel cells. A microbial fuel cell, MFC, is a bioelectrochemical system that drives an electric current by using bacteria and a high-energy oxidant such as O2, mimicking bacterial interactions found in nature. It converts chemical energy to electrical energy by the action of microorganisms. In microbial fuel cells, MFC, anode biofilm, is an important component. The main enzymatic components for electrogenesis is exoelectrogens. Microorganisms are able for the extracellular electron transfer. It was found can increase power density and capacitance, and decreased charge transfer resistance. For example, Ramasamy developed the anode biofilm during the first five days, and the results show anodic charge transfer resistance by about 40%, from 2.6 to 1.5 kΩc cm2 at 0.27 A-M2, in a ferrocyanide cathode MFC. Another example is Borol work. His prepared anode showed anodic charge transfer resistance decreased by 75%, from 0.073 to 0.017 kΩmega cm2 at 2.63 A-M2, in an air cathode MFC. However, there is a lack of study to understand the electrochemical reactions of the bioanode due to the complexity and the absence of appropriate analytical methods. Moreover, at the time this paper published, there is no comparison between bioanode electrochemistry with that of abiotic anode, which is a suitable baseline for accurate evaluation therefore, to enhance MFC operation and performance, it is necessary to improve understanding of the bioanode. Besides that, several studies proposed riboflavin is very important in mediator-driven bioelectricity generation. Riboflavin also also known as vitamin B2 can form flavin mononucleotide via riboflavin kinase activity, and this biomolecule is prosthetic group of various oxidoreductases including NADH dehydrogenase. Schuonella species secretes flavins to perform exoelectrogenesis in the subsurface or the MFC condition. In an MFC experiment of S, 1E densis MR1 and MR4, more than 70% of electron transfer accounted for flavin mediation. To investigate anode electrochemistry, in this study anode EIS and polarization were conducted. Electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, EIS, is a technique to study anode electrochemistry without sacrifice anode electrode and yields quantitative values of anode electrochemical process. So author objectives are using EIS to compare impedance and thermodynamics of bioanode and abiotic anode, test electrochemical property of anode biofilm and investigate effects of riboflavin on electron transfer. Beside that, thermodynamic modulating were evaluated by using anode polarization by modulating poised anode potential. Let's go to the second part. Materials and methods. Firstly, MFC construction and operation. The author prepared single-chambered MFCs, 250 ml, a carbon cloth anode size 2.5 cm x 6 cm, 30 square centimeters. An air cathode has 7 square centimeters of point-coated area, for PTFE diffusion layers on carbon cloth type as you see in figure. The AG AGCL reference electrodes were inserted through a rubber stopper in a sidearm sampling port and sealed using silicon glue. The electrolytes is phosphate buffer medium at concentration 50 mm, pH equals 7, containing trace elements at concentration 10 ml L and vitamins at concentration 10 ml L with amendment of acetic acid, 10 mm, for electron donor. 
The 100 ml suspension from an electricity producing acetate fed MFC was used to inoculate anode electrode for the bioanode test, however, the abiotic anode was not inoculated. Riboflavin purity 98% by from alpha Ezar was added at a final concentration of 1 mm to test the effect of exogenous redox mediator. After setup, they connected it with 460 ohms resistance in the acclimation step, 10 days, and 100 omega resistance thereafter in 20 days. Second part is anode EIS analysis. Potentiostat was used to carry out EIS experiment. Anodes were poised at each test potential for 30 minutes at each potential with the following conditions. AC potential 10 MV RMS initial frequency 106 or 105 Hz, final frequency 50 or 10 MHz, and 10 points slash decade of data acquisition frequency. The circuit model bioanode 1. As you can see, the equivalent circuit included successive RC time constants, where an arc detected in low frequency domain is associated with initiating reactions for bioelectricity generation, R2, C2 and alpha 2 and an arc detected in high-frequency domain is associated with the electron transfer reaction, R1, C1 and alpha 1. RE is reference. Electrode, WE is working electrode, ROM is ohmic resistance. The result RP, omega, is the charge transfer resistance obtained from EIS. Exchange current, I0, was calculated via Tafel equation, where N is the number of electrons involved in the reaction. Potential values were reported with respect to AG slash AGCL using the equation of AG slash AGCL equals SHE, 197 MV. Now I would like to move on the third part. Results and discussion. Firstly, the result from experiments show us the impact of anode biofilm on activation over potential. Figure shows, A, is anode polarization curves, B, is Nyquist plots, and, C, is Bode plots. The abbreviation LF indicate low frequency, HF indicate high frequency. Open circuit potentials, OCPs, of anodes when current equals zero were 533 MV for the abiotic anode and 516 MV for the bioanode, and their difference was 1049 MV. This difference is increased to 1700 MV when current produced more than 100 mua. Therefore, bioanode had negligible activation over potential than abiotic anode. Measured OCPs of the bioanode, 516 MV, and the abiotic anode, 533 MV, were close to the acetate oxidation and the water electrolysis thermodynamics. When abiotic anode had a huge activation potential due to the slowness of reaction, anode biofilm formation of bioanode made the acetate oxidation possible and made activation over potential negligible when it comes to the acetate oxidation. The second characteristic is considered as impact of anode biofilm on impedance. Figure and table here shows the different impedance characteristic in low slash high frequency of tested anodes. In low frequency, in the bioanode, R2 ranged from 36 to 93 ohms, C2 ranged from 7.6 to 14.9 mF, and alpha 2 ranged from 0.70 to 0.87 within current range of 160 and 14.24 mUa. In the abiotic anode, R2 ranged from 32 to 10,680 ohms, C2 ranged from 2.7 to 3.1 mF, and alpha 2 ranged from 0.95 to 0.96 within current range of 5 and 19.15 mUa. It means the bioanode had lower charge transfer resistance and higher capacitance than the abiotic anode, and the bioanode showed more non-ideal capacitance in both charge transfer processes. In high frequency, the impedance characteristics were relatively similar between the abiotic anode and the bioanode. Total average capacitances, 30 mF, of the bioanode was tenfold larger than the abiotic anode, 3 mF, possibly due to the dominance of geobacter sulfuridusins, which is a dominant. Exoelectrogenic strain of the anode biofilm in this tested MFC system. Acetate could be utilized as an electron donor preferentially and activation over potential also could be minimized. In addition, impedance parameters change during current development in the bioanode.
In the abiotic anode, impedance decreased as current increased. However, it rapidly increased without any increase of current production in the bioanode. The last effect the author studied is effects of riboflavin on bioanode electrochemistry. In figure, A and B show the impedance spectra from the abiotic anode while C and D are bioanode result measured at open circuit. Addition of riboflavin, 1 mm, mainly affected the high-frequency impedance of the abiotic anode and the low-frequency impedance of the bioanode. In the abiotic anode, riboflavin induced a phase angle shift and created curvature in the high-frequency impedance in Nyquist plots. In the bioanode, riboflavin addition drastically reduced R2 from 531 to 162 ohms, increased C2 from 7.2 to 10.0 mF, and decreased alpha 2 from 0.97 to 0.92. The effects of riboflavin addition on the high-frequency reaction were less pronounced. It increased R1 from 14.0 to 15.1 ohms, decreased C1 from 0.53 to 0.25 mF, decreased alpha from 0.79 to 0.72. Exchange current increased from 0.6 times 10.2 to 1.8 times 10.2 ma when riboflavin was added. In briefly, the phase angle shift and curvature occurrence in high frequency were shown when riboflavin was added to the abiotic anode, indicating riboflavin might activate the high frequency reaction. In the bioanode, riboflavin addition might increase exoelectrogenic microbial activity because the low frequency reaction was suggested to be intracellular microbial activity and because electron transfer mediator was increased by adding riboflavin. So, in the conclusion, I want to summarize some points. About comparison between the abiotic anode and the bioanode, the bioanode had lower charge transfer resistance and higher capacitance for the low frequency reaction than the abiotic anode, and it showed more non ideal capacitance in both charge transfer processes. About effect of riboflavin in the abiotic anode, riboflavin induced a phase angle shift and created curvature in the high frequency arc in Nyquist plots while in the bioanode, riboflavin addition increased capacitance and charge transfer. The author recommend anode community analysis upon riboflavin addition would show what microbial groups would be dominant in the redox shuttle-driven exoelectrogenic condition. Thank you for your attention. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button and give me a thumbs.